Hi and welcome. Today we are looking at what fresh milk or lye burnt milk looks like in soap. And of course, always wear your protective gear, your gloves, your long pants, you covered your shoes, uh, tie your hair back, and of course, your eye protection. Always measure with precision as you don't want your soap to be lye heavy or um, accidentally have too much of a super fat if you don't have enough lye in your soap. And today we are making two bars of soap to compare the difference between fresh milk lye solution, which we are making right now, versus the milk lye solution that was left out to room temperature that got burnt because I didn't stir it um, consistently. So this is extremely important to stir your milk slowly by adding your lye slowly to the milk, um, letting it melt and not get so hot. This is a, an easier way to do things, keeping your lye cool. When you are mixing your lye to your solution, to your milk or um, whatever you choose to use, um, it is very important to wear eye protection and uh, in a well-ventilated room as this produces a, um, a smell that's very strong and can really bother you. And make sure that you get all of the sodium hydroxide out of the container. Um, into your lye solution. Continue stirring until all of the milk has melted into the lye. Um, this is extremely important as you want to make sure that it is all dissolved. And there's the one that was set out for room temperature that got burnt. So you can see it's a different color. It's, just, it's a darker color than the one that we just made that's fresh. So keep stirring, making sure that everything is dissolved completely. And there's the oils. These are room temperature oils that I'm putting into the big bowl right now. And make sure you get all of it out by scraping it all out. And on the right side, I have my um, hard oils at room temperature. I melted them down in a double boiler. Um, I have um, beeswax in there, which makes it, uh, I need to make it a hotter water um, for it all to melt. After I take it out of the double boiler, I like to stir it around to make sure everything is melted and it helps cool down the um, oils while I stir. And when I put the two oils together, um, it also reduces the temperature, um, making it easier to mix. And I like to stir it up to cool it down even uh, more to make sure that the oils and the lye solution are as close to a temperature, the same temperature as possible, making it also easier to make the soap. I'm stirring the milk lye solution as I don't want it to get burnt like the other one did, so I'm just keeping my eye on it. And here is the one that got burnt um, that I made a few hours before that I didn't stir on a consistent basis, so it made it burnt. But it is still usable, so don't trash it. Because the milk has been sitting out for so long, um, it has a lot of fat in it um, from being cooked. So I use um, a strainer to help break down all the extra fat that's in the milk. Um, and it makes it easier as well. So I'm flattening it against the screen just to get everything out. Make sure there's no hard clumps or anything like that. You can also use this for any other fresh lye that you make. It makes it easier to find all the crystals that did not dissolve completely. You don't want those in the soap. Just a side note, um, all the milk that I use in my soap, I do get from uh, a local farmer um, who has goats and cows and sheep. And so it's a lot of fun to meet up and, and get the milk or the, all the soap that I make.
I love watching the oils mix in together as it makes little swirls. Um, and that helps also know if it's ready to be poured into a mold. Now you can bump your stuck blender up and down um, to get the air bubbles out from the cup that's underneath. Um, but some have told me that that actually causes air bubbles. So moving it around like that before you turn the engine on, before you turn the motor on, does also help get the air bubbles out of your mixture. Just keep mixing and mixing and mixing until you don't see any more of those streaks. What you're looking for is um, some sort of a line when you uh, pick up the spatula that you see a line. You also want to make sure that you scrape the edges of the batter to make sure all of the oils and lye got mixed together. Anything that's left on the edge could um, influence your soap significantly if it's not mixed well. Here we are getting ready to pour it into the mold. These are the um, popular Amazon molds that I got. Um, I got several of them, different colors, purple and pink and blue. Um, they're pretty cheap and they make 10 bars um, if you cut it just right. So it's a, it's a pretty nice um, mold and it does a really good job with the soaps. Um, make sure you scrape all of the soap off for easy cleaning of the container that you're using. It makes, a, it, makes it a lot easier to clean your um, tools afterwards. I like to level it off and then um, bang it on the counter. And as you can see, when I bang it, that everything moves. Um, that's how hard I'm banging it to get all the air bubbles out and level it off. And here you can be as creative as you want to be. I scrape off the soap that's on the top because um, it uh, will have a lid and it will stick if I don't get all that soap off the top. And then you can make any kind of decoration that you want on the top. Just be as fancy or as plain as you want to be. It's all up to you on this point. Okay, here is the beginning of the second uh, loaf of soap and this one will be with the fresh uh, lye milk solution and you will see how different it can be in color so I just added the room temperature liquid oils to the bowl and then I'm going to add the um, double boiler uh, warmed um, oils um, like canola oil, palm oil, beeswax, those are all hard oils. They need to be melted down. Um, I use a double boil method. It's my preference. Uh, you can also use a microwave in 30 second bursts um, uh, to mix it and melt it to where you need it to be. And here I'm checking the temperature to make sure that they are in relative uh, temperature uh, close to each other. Um, some people like to do the um, heat transfer method um, here as well, having the oils at room temperature and their light solution either hot or cold and having them mixed together puts it at a nice 72 degree temperature-ish um, for easy mixing. Some people like to... Um, mix their soaps higher or at a lower temperature, depending on what they're looking for. The mixing part can be as um, fast as a couple minutes, or it could be as slow as 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the temperature that you choose to work with. The higher the temperature, the faster it will emulsify, which you'll be looking at for trace. Um, 
when I lift up the um, spatula, I'm looking for a line that stays on the top. That is trace, um, also known as emulsification, uh, mixing of the two, um, the oils and the lye solution. And as always, you want to scrape the sides of your container to make sure all of it has been mixed properly. And here's the molding of the second uh, loaf of soap that um, I use the fresh milk with. Now always clean up your blenders. Um, whenever you uh, drip any kind of soap um, that bef before it's cured as it will still burn your skin um, and make a pretty nasty rash. It hurts a lot, so not recommended. Please clean up. And then again, you can make your own kind of design on the top, be as creative as you want to. Some people do a lot of things and some do not so much. So, and others are in between. So this is your creative side that comes out. Um, I like to keep mine plain whenever my soap is plain. It's very simple. Um, just to keep it, you know, the theme going that it, this is a very simple soap. And I like to put a lid on my soap um, for a couple of reasons. One is to keep it warm so it can go through some sort of a gel phase. Um, I don't push it through the gel phase it like the um, oven at this point my oven doesn't work um, so I just put a lid on it and put it aside um, some people also like to spray um, very high content alcohol on top to prevent ash um, and that's just a common build up on the top of this of the soap and here I am showing you how to take gloves off a lot of people don't know how to do this surprisingly so I just wanted to share this just to, just in case um, it keeps all the lye inside of the gloves if you get it onto your so, and here is the cut, the exciting part. Um, I, I do label my molds and I make a record of um, what batter goes into those molds so I can keep track. Um, here is a good way to find out if it's ready, if it's easy to um, take off on the ends, um, separate from the mold, and the corners, if it's not quite ready yet, the corners might be a little on the soft side. Mine are a little on the soft side, so I could have waited a little bit longer. I did wait 24 hours, so I could have sat for a little bit longer than that. And here is the cut. And that is just beautiful. So this is the one that was with the burnt uh, milk. So you're going to see it's a little bit darker. Um, but it's still very usable. Um, some people like the lighter color and some people like the darker color. So it's all preference at this point. Everything else is exactly the same. Here's the second mold. This mold is of the um, milk that I made fresh um, during the process. It did not sit, so it was still not uh, burnt. It was still very fresh and cold. Um, in the lye solution. In the corners, it's a little bit harder. So it's good. And here is the cut. And as you can already see, it is a little bit on the lighter side than the other bar. So here's the second bar uh, made with the fresh milk um, and a comparison of the two you will see in a second here. So this is just 24 hours of curing. Um, there's not much difference and as it cures it does get a little bit darker as you can see. This is a week later. So as a conclusion, uh, making soap with scorched lye milk mixture will not ruin the soap. It will make the soap darker, but it's still usable. Thanks so much for watching. Please click the thumbs up and subscribe to know of new videos. See you on the next one.